Okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so thank you again for having me here. I'm very happy to to be part of the discussion so far. It's very exciting, and now I'm. I hope to share with you some uh, story how we evaluate the effectiveness of human and AI collaborations. So I'm assistant professor uh, at Auburn University. Um, so AI has been uh, ubiquitous uh, ingredients behind many, many uh, applications, many um, industry sectors that you have seen. And there's this need for explainable AI. People are constantly asking about, do we need to know what's going on internally inside these huge giant neural networks, right? We need to know why your self-driving cars decide to stop when there's a green light. So all these behaviors, we want some explanations. The question is why, right? Um, so for example, you can see this is uh, two years ago, an image generator at CVPR top tier conference in computer vision. It shows it is a huge ratio bias. It's a network trend to do up sampling. So generating from low res images here of Barack Obama, and it's supposed to synthesize for you someone of the same identity, uh, but with a <clears throat> better fidelity quality image. However, it tends to bias towards the um, Y men. Um, this is a text generator by OpenAI. Um, it's a machine where you talk to it, you give it some text, it will talk back to you. It outputs some text, um, <clears throat> but it has also this huge racial and gender bias. Um, for example, if you say the man worked as, it will tell you a car salesman at a wo local Walmart as a uh, completing the, your sentence. Now, if you say this is the woman worked as, and then it will tell you a lot of other things that are pretty um, disturbing for, for us. Um, so it has a huge gender bias and the whole AI is, is a black box. Recently, just in the last year, there are multiple false arrests by police um, because the AI, when it surfs through the um, extraction from, from cameras, um, it, it will find wrong suspect uh, for shoplifting or any other um, crimes. And a lot of people were put in jail for the wrong reasons, just because AI said so. Um, as this is borrowed from DARPA, um, the current generation of AI system offer tremendous benefits, but the effectiveness will be limited by the machine ability to explain uh, its decision and action to users. Um, <clears throat> so this is traditional AI where you give it some data and you let it learn how to solve the task by itself. Um, and then the output is this pre-trained black box model, and it's either give you a decision or recommendation and then let you decide what to do with it. So uh, for high stake decisions, uh, humans are the ultimate decision maker. So my research um, involves how do we building this explanation interface that allows AIs uh, to talk to humans and back and forth so that they both can achieve better accuracy um, or performance than each of them alone. And the, 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 the bottom line is the human AI teamwork is needed because neither humans nor AIs can solve the task by themselves uh, completely, right? Um, and efficiently. Um, so the task, uh, one task I will talk about in this talk today is fine grained bird identification. So we, we have here in this uh, cup data set, 200 classes. Your job is to give an, an image, let's say this photo, uh, pick one of the classes among the 200. So pine warble, for example. <clears throat> so given this image, pick one of the class and the correct one here is American goldfinch. It's actually a not an easy task for lay users unless you are bird experts, you spend a lot of time with birds. Um, <clears throat> yeah, of, of course, also asking uh, lay users um, to to choose one of the 200 classes require users to know about all the classes. So this is a, a pretty daunting and overwhelming task uh, that's hard to scale beyond expert users. So here we reformulate the task into a two-stage process. So given an input image, we give it to the AI and the AI provides some prediction, some decision. Let's say it, it thinks this is 60% American goldfinch. And now in stage two, the users led to see this decision. In this case, it's correct. And it can compare with some examples of American goldfinch. 
and users get to agree or disagree. So it's a binary, it's a yes or no uh, decision. Some case AI will be wrong. And like here it says, I'm 30% confident that this is evening girl speak. Um, it's similar, but it's not exactly the same. And human should di disagree in this case. All right. So the reason we reformulate the task in this way is because AI is as a very, very accurate uh, in this task of 200 way, you know, uh, categorization, it's 85% accurate. <clears throat> However, it's not 100% accurate. Um, <clears throat> so how accurate are humans? If you have any guests, um, it's time to make it now. Uh, we actually run multiple gorilla studies to get uh, this number, uh, and actually it's 65%. It turns out to be not an easy task, although it's binary, it's just two options, and 50% is a random chance. And humans score on average 65% on this task. Um, it looks like the following. Before each trial, each question, we actually provide uh, examples of uh, the class that the AI predicted. Which, which could be correct or wrong, we don't know. Um, let's say horn puffin here. So we provide six um, examples and users given a photo that AI predicted to be horn puffin, uh, humans have to select yes or no, right? So this is a task and humans score 65% uh, accurate. Now, one question that we study in our research is, if this is the case, right, um, it's, it's pretty limited. The interaction between human and AI, is, it's limited. It's, it's one way and uh, we do not, how can we um, get more information out of the AIs? For example, some explanation uh, why this is horn puffing so that humans can improve their accuracy. Um, it leads to our second research questions that do AI explanations help improve user accuracy? Um, so here I will, uh, we conducted uh, previous research where we invented first the methods uh, that AIs, that provide AIs capability of explanations. And then we run the human study to evaluate the explanations as a, as a post process. Uh, so given the query image, the AI normally give you some prediction like Junco with some confidence, 97%, and user decides yes or no if this is a Junco. Um, our explainable AIs provide additional information. Uh, here it says that uh, if, uh, I think this is a Junco because it's similar to other Junco examples in the beak, in the <clears throat> chest or in the, in the tail. Um, so it, we provide here, um, visual correspondence between the, the query image and examples the Junco that the model thinks it is okay so <clears throat> this is the the main explanation that we uh, invented and, and uh, study it turns out that um, without any explanation um, so we are in a gorilla study we have a six methods and our main method is these two and the other three are ablated version of the first one just to understand the effects. But in this talk, I just compare the, the main baseline and, and our main treatment. Um, so human without any explanation, um, so no further information, it's just 65% accurate. But if you provide um, explanations, they improve consistently, all those um, slightly, but consistently uh, improve their performance to 67 and 69. And there's a statistical significance between these two uh, groups. Uh, and the users per each uh, method, uh, around 60 users. In total, we have uh, 355 users for the whole study. Um, the way we set up this gorilla setting is, it's, we have five training examples for this BERT uh, task. And then followed by five, so we, we teach users how to do the task. And we provide five quality control examples. It's called validation. And if user passed it, we then proceed them onto the test of 30 questions. If they fail, um, we just reject them and invite them, them out of the study. Uh, it's the end. Mm -hmm. 
And the acceptance rate into, the, into this study is only around 33%, around 1,100 users participated in the training and the screening, uh, but only um, 355 were made it past the quality control uh, via Prolific. Uh, we hire native English speakers, um, and they came from uh, a lot of places in the world. Uh, we paid at 13, $13.5 per hour, and the whole study is estimated to be 20 minutes, although it, it varies from um, around 10 to, to, to 45. And Gorilla is very, very um, efficient tools for us for this type of study. Um, this is our third study, uh, third paper on this topic. Um, now, although with only one user study, we actually can uh, um, perform a test on two human AI interaction model. So in the first model here, we provide AI with an input image and it provides some decision and the human gets to say yes or no. And this is American Goldfinch. In the second model, um, the AI will provide you the confidence and based on the confidence, you will let the AI make a decision by itself or um, when the AI is not so confident, we leave it to humans. So this is the second model. And we want to test whether the explanation can help improve the, the human accuracy and the whole system accuracy on model two. Um, so it turns out that with the model two, we test, uh, different range of confidence scores. And uh, it turns out that we can automate, basically leave for the AI to decide 75% of the data and humans only need to work on 25% of the data. Mm. So it's pretty interesting. Um, and furthermore, we find that if you team the humans with AI, so let both of them make a decision on complement sets of each other, then the team performance actually it's it can be better than the AI alone, and it's much better than the humans alone. So we are very excited about this work because it is the first work in this area that shows that human and AI when teaming up can actually achieve some improvement in visual uh, recognition. Um, one question you might ask is what made the humans more accurate when they see the AI explanations, right? So we perform multiple slices deeper into the data we get um, from Gorilla. So when AI is correct, you can see that this is a, the blue bar is a no explanation. So the performance similarly to the red and the brown, which are the treatments with explanations. However, when AI is wrong, this is where the explanation actually shine. It, it is benefits the users. There's almost more than 10 point gap between no explanation and when there's explanation uh, provided. Um, basically, for example, when AI is incorrect, it's it, thinking that this is an olive uh, fly catcher, which actually is not true. It's actually a Sionist uh, bird. Mm. For other treatments, we baseline treatments, when we provide this explanation, uh, this is uh, olive flycatcher because it looks like these birds. Uh, all users, four over four, that see this explanation actually wrongly accepted the bird. Interestingly, for our explanation, when we provide this uh, correspondence and, and this explanation, all three um, out of three users for this example, correctly uh, rejected and things that AI, hey, this is wrong. I do not accept this. Um, so in conclusion, it, we find for the first time that humans can improve their accuracy when using AI explanation for uh, bird identification. Um, and in the model two human AI interactions, we can offload around 75% of data to AIs and letting users just label the rest and that human AI uh, splitting improved the whole system, total system accuracy compared to AI alone and humans alone. Um, this work was done with uh, Zhang Yun and Mohamed Tessuri, my uh, PhD students. There are more interesting questions you can think of, right? Uh, for example, because we perform this online behavioral study, so we do not know exactly what made users more accurate in the AI wrong 
we, um, cases. We only have some hypotheses, but we do not actually observe what's going on. Um, and the second is the improvement in the human accuracy. It's, it's from two to 4%. So it's are still modest at this point. So how can we improve them further? Um, and whether the explanation help the human expert is a separate um, questions. Uh, we share paper and code and also Gorilla screen and settings uh, on our website if anyone is interested in, in replicating. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and that was amazing. I had no idea what you were going to talk about. That was absolutely amazing. I love this. I go for so long, people go, oh, but AI is going to do it all. And you've gone, no, 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 no. That's the wrong question. It's it's AIs and humans working together. And I'm quite certain there are a lot of people in the room who would love an AI that helps them mark psychology essays come marking time and can at least like get a rough categorization of of um, of the essays. So it just needs to be checked by by right. a human. So I just I, th I think that's such a different approach to thinking about how AIs and humans work together. So thank you for sharing that with us today. Um, I do have a question for you. How did you, how did you maximize the quality of the answers that you got from, from your human participants? Right, this is a very, very interesting question. And we spend a lot of time thinking about this and we, we play and we use also uh, code to, to try to improve it. So I have some backup slides here where Okay, where is it here? Where we list our not exhaustive list, but some of the things that we we did and we never thought of at the beginning. So it takes multiple trials to get it. Um, so for example, we use quality control examples from five to 10. For this bird, we use five. For other tasks, we use 10. And we reject users if they do not pass. And we also maybe cruelly, we also do not pay them. Uh, so we say this in advance in the introduction screen that if you do not pass, uh, we will never pay you. Okay, so this is the first thing to, to we think this is important in, in uh, scaring away some people who are not too serious. Um, second is we ask the users on the first screen to stay on the screen and do not switch tasks because many times they come back with it, uh, two hours later with the task where for, uh, for which you think it just takes 20 minutes. Um, so this is very important to limit it and tell them that they are not allowed to switch tasks. Um, we also do not allow um, studies on phones or tablets. They, they need to use computer and specifically just Chrome to avoid any issues. Um, something we uh, have to hack into the program, but which is nicely um, uh, doable on using JavaScript on Gorilla is we can choose a time 5,000 milliseconds uh, before you display the continue button, like be be before the yes or no button. So th they need to look at the example first and then before they can just hit next, 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 next. So that's not possible with our setup. Mm -hmm. uh, also, this is from one of the pr prior study is we feel the humans who perform too fast. Uh, for example, for a task that is 20 minutes, we, we estimate on average 20 minutes, we, we will filter out people with eight minutes or less. Um, so that that's all yes that's that's really great I, i've taken a screenshot of your um top tips so i think these are um these are rules that a lot of people could use to improve the data quality and thank you so much for your time today